engaged in a way of creating a shared vision and alignment on goals around the customer, not to senior management necessarily, but around what really needs to happen in the organization. And that will create common purpose with management and the employees. So that would be one way to address that component of resistance. There is the other side of resistance and people say, this is great, I love it, but I have a different priority, I have a different job, you know, my, and and at that point we need to clarify how priorities align, or maybe uh, pare down, prioritize what people are really doing. So the, the answer to, to Barbara is we would assess which of the root causes uh, are driving the the resistance and address that cause in a specific way and we train the change champions for them to facilitate that particular uh, answer. Yeah, I, we recently did a training for a, a, a company that had that very similar question and at the end of our, our uh, change champion training one of the leaders stood up and said, great, now I know what to do with so and so because I, I, I can understand now what his root cause is, so um, that, that's really powerful. Um, a question from Lisa Sossman. Can you have too many change champions? You can. I agree. Uh, I think that you need to have at most two per change initiative that you are uh, assigning to them. If you have too many, you might end up in a situation that, um, that, that these groups start becoming diluted and they're not seen as a specialized team. They're seen as, well, everyone has become one of them. And, uh, over a period of time, these people rotate. So you may not have a lot of change champions active at one period of time, but over time there will be a growing pool of that skill that would facilitate change down the road. Perfect. Perfect. Our next question 